Hello guys, Erica Hargaden here, Certified Child Sleep Consultant at my private practice, Babogue. I'm the creator of the Sleep Series, which is a video-based online sleep program to help you on your journeys with your little one's sleep. And I'm a mum of three, so there's very little I haven't seen on the sleep front. And today's topic is one that I get asked about quite frequently, particularly on DMs, particularly in my one-to-one -one sessions. So let's talk about dream feeds, what they are, how useful they can be or not, and whether you should be using one in trying to figure your little one's sleep out. So essentially, what is it? A dream feed is where you lift your baby and feed them at a particular time of the evening. Now, I recommend this feed to take place at 10.30 because for me, that's probably a key time that parents are maybe starting to head off towards going to bed. So 10.30 kind of time. And you literally lift and feed. A lot of parents are quite confused as to whether they wake their baby fully, take them out of the sleep environment. No. Turn on the light on the landing. Lo use a light source from outside of the room. Don't use your mobile phone or the torch on your mobile phone. Go to your child, lift them from their sleep environment. If they're the type of child that tends to leak a nappy, change their nappy really, really quietly and keep them in their sleeping bag. Zip it back up and sit down into a chair and feed them. Now, my recommendation would be that this feed would be a bottle feed, even for a breastfed baby, like a, a bottle of expressed breast milk gives the mother the opportunity to have a break and the dad or the other partner an opportunity to feed their little one. I know for my husband, he really enjoyed those opportunities to get to feed the kids when they were really small. And I loved the opportunity to head to bed before 10 o'clock, you know, when I'd been with the kids all day when they were little. So it, it, and it's also an opportunity as well to get your child used to taking a bottle at some point. And it's a feed that's likely to be dropped, you know, kind of first, other than a night feed, obviously. So I would think using a bottle for that feed is, is quite important. Now, it's not essential, but it can be important. I've had lots and lots of clients over the years that have breastfed for that feed because their child just won't take a bottle and it works perfectly, perfectly fine. Is a dream feed absolutely going to make your baby sleep longer stretches at night? Sometimes yes, and sometimes no. I find where a dream feed is incorporated into a child's routine from quite early, so from kind of the newbornish stage, you're more likely to see longer stretches at night um, when it's coupled in with maybe a structured lead feeding during the day. That's what I've seen. I would generally see where you give this top up feed, this dream feed before they embark on their core night sleep. You're more likely to see the baby do longer stretches before they require another feed. There are schools of thought that, you know, would be out there and you're going to Google these and you're going to find them that say the dream feeds disrupt sleeping patterns. I haven't found that. I have found children that refuse dream feeds, won't take them or take very little at dream feeds, but I haven't found a dream feed to disrupt a sleeping pattern um, at all. That's what I found. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but that's what I found. So should you try it? Yeah, give it a go. What have you got to lose? I think if you are on the newborn stage and you're watching this, absolutely incorporate a structured dream feed into the mix. You won't regret it. If your child is kind of four months of age and you're still experiencing, you know, quite a bit of issues around night waking, then maybe incorporating a dream feed into the mix would help things. But what I would absolutely give it consistency for at least 10 days before deciding whether it's working or not. If you're experiencing issues around your child's sleep and they're nine months of age or over, then it's probably more to do with something else going on with their sleep than really a dream feed could solve. I generally, when I come to the table with families of children who are nine months plus, we generally wouldn't look at using the dream feed. It's really only for babies who are younger than that that I would look at incorporating a dream feed into a plan. So as I said, keep it nice and dark, 
Make sure that you don't disturb them as much as possible. Generally, what I find, you just lift them, sit them up in your arms and feed and make an, an indication like it's a bottle feed, but it could be a breastfeed. Um, and usually baby is quite relaxed and less likely to take on an awful lot of wind during that feed, but always give the opportunity for them to get their wind up so that you don't put them back down and then experience kind of windy baby syndrome thereafter. Um, have you tried it and it's not working? What I'd say, if you've tried it and it's not working, fine, no problem. You know, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong. It just means the dream feed isn't for you and maybe it isn't for your baby. And, and that's all right. Um, I used it in all three of my kids and it worked really, really well. And I found that they dropped the night feed themselves much quicker where the dream feed was used from quite early. And then I would have structured their feeding during the day from about six or eight weeks. You know, that's kind of an important part of it as well. Um, then if, you know, kind of if it's not working, you need to look at everything else. Is sleep initiation happening in a child that's over four months of age? Are they falling asleep themselves? Is there a lot going on in terms of your input into your child's sleep? Um, you know, is, is multiple soother, you know, replugs in the mix an issue? There could be an awful lot more going on than the dream feed is capable of solving. But ultimately, I would always advise you to make sure that you try it for at least 10 days. I would never make a change with the child without going, I'm going to try this for at least 10 days, unless it's like absolutely showing you that it's not working and you think your child's like having a bad reaction to something. But try it for 10 days. That allows your child to get used to the experience of being lifted, used to the experience of being fed at that time, used to the experience of being returned to their sleep environment to go through their core night's sleep. Um, I think if you try something for at least 10 days, you're giving it every chance of working and you're more likely to see the positive results. Ultimately, though, working on establishing um, sleep environments that are supportive of their sleep and initiation of their own sleep and maintenance of their own sleep and everything that I talk about in the seven steps to better sleep is going to get you to a better place with their sleep more than the dream feed is going to do. The dream feed is about anchoring feeding and it's about giving another nutritional, you know, kind of option to them, another opportunity, excuse me, for them to get nutrition in before they embark on their night's sleep. If there's other issues going on, the dream feed's not going to solve them. But I think if you are starting out with a small baby and you're thinking about using it, I would absolutely give it a try. Um, I don't think you'd regret it. And within 10 days, you'd know whether it's working for them or not. So again, I hope you find that useful. If you want to know more about me, check out badbogue.com. There's a blog post on the Dream Feed on the website. Thanks again.